So let's talk about the episode. Let's talk about the episode. My girl Pooh can't catch no break. She didn't got dragged by a little old lady with a criminal past, with a book somebody care about. Pooh, I love you, but you deserve that. You don't talk about somebody like that. And you sitting right there by their mama, you expect not to get grabbed. KK did the right thing. As much as I don't like as much as I don't like KK, she did the right thing grabbing you. Cause you ain't gonna talk about my son and you sitting that close to me and expect me not to grab you by your roots. She did the right thing and you showing your blue draws and all all on stage on stage. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get on into this lot of the results. Okay, now I believe them. I believe them. The fact that Carly passed everything, she didn't pass the two with hiring, um, what was it? Hiring, um, uh, sleeping with pool or doing something sexual with, with sexual with pool. She didn't pass them two, but she, well, she failed everything. I mean, she passed everything, but failed those two questions. So that goes to show me, Carly Red, that you is a liar. You might have not used the bathroom on that girl's sheets, but you did something with hiring on um, pool. Quite, quite frankly, I don't care what the hell you did with them. I don't care if you got down, dirty, nasty, rolled around in the mud, rolled around in the hay. I don't care what you did with them. But that test said you were inconclusive, so you did something you don't want to confess to. I, I'm gonna give you a benefit of a doubt and say you didn't use the bathroom bathroom on that one machine, but you did do something. So Carly, while you mad all up in your fitness trying to attack my girl pool, you was doing something you ain't had no darn business doing, and now that it's coming out, and now that that lot of check the test and caught you behind, Carly, come clean. Come clean, my love. There's no more hiding in the shadows. I knew that a lot of tech the test you come bringing on the show. And um Rashida and Kurt's love mother mother's daughter dinner. I knew that was a scam. And I kind of suspect that the love and hip hop people were scamming along with you. How you were so relaxed, how you were so comfortable taking that lot of tech to test, and then to find out it really was accurate, it really was doing its job. You're behind, however, lying about that, about a line about having sex with harm in or a pool. You must have had that threesome. Now, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the other pooping on the sheets now. I ain't saying you pooping on people's sheets, but you did something inconclusive. Come on, Carly. Come clean. Matter of fact, don't come clean. We don't care enough. But anyways, though, that whole lot of tech to mess, we're never going to get the end of it. We're never going to know the truth. All we know that Carly Red came up inconclusive to the two things that she said didn't happen. So, Carly Red, you is a liar. Pooh, I love you dearly. You a liar, too. Cause Sutton did happen. Well, you saying Sutton happened. Sutton did happen. It's obvious the test said Sutton happened. Y'all might have kissed or touched each other or, you know, finger here, finger there. Might have got a little sexual, a little bit, penis sliding to the ground or getting pulled to the side and having fun or Sutton happened. Carly, Sutton happened. Hate to say it, but Sutton happened. And half of the people don't believe you. Your friends might believe that something didn't happen, but something went on. And Sierra, like you said, you barely know Pooh, but it seems like you the worst, but you the, um, the main one that want that girl. Like Sierra, I wish you would have sat down and shut up the rest of, well, the part two of this reunion. Because every time Pooh says something, every time Pooh can't slick, slip out, slick out the mouth, you was ready to jump on that girl. Now, you would have felt bad if, if, um, if Spice, I mean Spice, if Pooh would have gave you a four-piece combo, you would have sat your happy behind down somewhere then I wouldn't you like it was so amazing how you want to grab that girl you want to fight her so bad between you and spice I got sick of y'all running up trying to charge that girl she was already busy why y'all trying to attack that girl that's not fair if y'all gonna fight that girl can't y'all do it one at a time not try to attack her all at once 
KK had dad. She shouldn't have said that about her son. I don't like scrap, but KK had dad. KK had her in the right position with her legs wide open, showing her drawers, and was tugging on that hair like she was playing tug of war with it. Pooh, you got a good extension in. Because the way um KK was tugging and pulling at that hair, and the way you had your legs all wide open with them all up in the air, she had you. <laughs> there was no you couldn't run even if you wanted to she had you and i was wondering who attacked who and who was that attacking you because i remember you with that blonde um hair but i was wondering who was who finally caught you but yeah they caught you and pool you should have asked for some asked for some, asked for some protection or hired you a little security guard because baby you should have known half of the cast wanted you you had um carly coming out of you you had um carly coming out of you had tokyo sierra wanted you the worst way she wanted to knock you down and beat your beat your lights out that's how bad sierra wanted you and then we noticed how um Ogbar she wanted you but she calmed down or was that Ogbar? Yeah, I think it was Ogbar, if I'm not mistaken. But I noticed how Tokyo got up a couple of times wanting to get your behind too. Like, who with that many enemies and all that money you got, you could at least have hired you a little security guard to at least be right there behind you in case somebody do decide to get handsy with you. Like, the way she grabbed you, and you should have known that she was going to grab you. You talking about her son. I don't like Scrap, scrap Deleon. And she did the right thing by grabbing you. That was a nice moment. That man changing his life around. He's a soccer a soccer dad now. He's spending time with his son, his his children. He said he's single. He don't want no more no more woman. He was supposed to move in with Sierra, I think. Not Sierra, Tierra. I guess that didn't work out. I guess she finally got the letdown of her dream. And now, so you, Moniece, with your little bitter tears, and I don't want to date a piece of trash like you because you're going to hurt me. Moniece, you've been getting hurt on Love and Hip Hop how long now? I'm, I, I, you know what? I'm sorry your country expired, but I'm going to miss the feisty, side, the feisty side of you. I don't care about the love side of you. I care about that feisty side of you. I hate to see you go. I know your contract expired. I read that on YouTube somewhere, but I'm going to miss you. But, but all you got to offer us is your love, your pitiful love. You can't never keep a man or a woman. They always manage to disappoint you or you manage to manage to fight your way or find your way to get yourself in some trouble and have them yelling and arguing with you like the whole um what's that boy name from hollywood Ra not raspy Love fizz, how y'all didn't argue, how many from the beginning all the way to now y'all still arguing from you and eight what is it ad and that then you come on atlanta and now you out to the main Stevie J Jr. Scrap, and now you mad that he didn't hurt you and disappointed you. When KK was trying to hook y'all up together, you should have known that was a sign that that wasn't going to work. I don't know how hard it was for you to catch on that that was not going to work. You is not going to be happy with uh, Scrap. You know he a player. You ought to at least know about his history. Even if you don't know about his history, you should have asked somebody about his history. Go ask Tommy. Go ask Sierra, I mean Tommy. Go ask um Tiara. That's the I don't know why I keep on saying Sierra or T. Go ask Tiara. Um Sierra didn't get a chance to get her heart broken. She already in the process of getting her heart um broken, talking about it's complicated. It ain't complicated. Y'all just complicated the day and y'all need to break the hell up. That's what y'all need to do. But Moniz, I'm really not here for you and your love. I'd rather see you go around here fighting everybody and trying to manhandle the people than you trying to um trying to find love on this show. Cause I am sick of you and I'm sick of Eddie and I'm sick of Love Fizz and I'm sick of your love life on Love and Hip Hop. It had to run out of venture and I'm glad it finally ran out with your love.
So I'm gonna miss you, but not really, Moniz, cause you weren't really bringing nothing to the show besides your love part. I'd rather see you go around here fighting, acting a fool, than to see you around here trying to have a relationship you know not gonna work or a relationship that you always gonna mess up no matter how hard you try to keep on to it like that whole ad situation so by moniz i guess um but yeah i was happy for scrap or whatever his whole changing his life around trying to do for the better carly even said some nice words because they was having a sexual relationship he was in prison carla was spending putting money on his books and all that i was all happy inside it for me not to like scrap daily young i actually enjoyed that segment of the show until pool came in with her little two cents why she when she got before she got grabbed and manhandled and almost scratched the death by her wig before all that happened that was a nice little moment everybody had happy thoughts happy um happy thoughts good vibes about him he changing his life around he got a little seafood restaurant um he's spending more time with his kids he's single where he need to be everything was going fine until Pooh opened her mouth and almost got her wig knocked off her by a little old criminal lady so Pooh, you got what you deserve at that moment. I can't believe, I, I, I just can't believe that you actually had the balls to say that as close as KK was to you. You lucky Moniece didn't grab your behind. Like she said, she a rock with you, but she ain't gonna date you. That's who I was hoping, uh, hoping caught you. Moniece caught your behind, but you lucky. You got the old lady around here trying to swing on you. So you got off good. Just think of that as you, just think of that as you got off good. Cause Moniece didn't touch you. Karen touched you. And you know she ain't that strong, but that grip she had on your hair, it was, must have been that strong. Cause baby, she was tugging at that hair. I mean, poor thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was funny and that was hilarious. So like I actually died laughing at KK trying to yank your wig off your head. Um, the whole Stevie situation with Stevie not being there for him when he was on parole. How he was supposed to write in a um a letter or go up to the prison and say a good word that help him get out even though stevie couldn't help you in that getting out for getting out parole or helping you get off anything involving prison because stevie got his own arrest record and his own child support issues he be going to but i'm glad y'all made up or whatever and i'm glad that carly i guess still like him as a friend i'm guessing but anyways though let's move on um, oh God, Sierra. Sierra in the BK relationship. At this point, Sierra, I done had two seasons of you and BK. I didn't have about enough of you. If you don't come back next season, I won't miss you. Really, I won't. I kind of like you when you first came on the scene. After seeing two years of you getting cheated on and two seasons of you getting cheated on and you still with that man, I got nothing for you. I got less sympathy for you than I got for um Bonice and her loveless relationship she be going in. So if you like that cheater, oh well. And as for Pooh possibly trying to sleep with BK or wanted to sleep with BK but it didn't work or whatever, I don't care. I really don't care enough. But Sierra, you got a cheater, and you can't call him a cheater because apparently you didn't cheat it too. You had this man wondering what the hell was going on with you and what you was doing. So just like you said, he a cheater. You a cheater with him. Um, you a cheater with him. So good luck trying to call him a cheater, and you're a cheater too. Um, the Og Bar, the Moniz, the Spice, the Tokyo situation. I'm glad Spice and Tokyo still um 
still like Tokyo, I mean, still like Ogbar, and they still good. They kind of laugh it off at the reunion about what they said about each other, how she the queen of um, Atlanta, and how they should have asked her can they come in or whatever. I'm glad they laughed that off and played that off or whatever. It wasn't no big deal. They still friends. They still like each other. Now, with the Ogbar and uh, Shakana situation, this basically started from an old beef about a man, a baby daddy, and it used to be I used to date him. I used to date him. Now I don't date him. But when it comes to y'all business, I'm all up in y'all business. Now what you going to do about it? If that's true or not true, I kind of feel, Ogbar, you being in my business, that's my baby daddy. You ain't got no business in him. Um, I kind of like Shakana. Don't care. You're not going to touch me. You touch me. I'm calling the police. I ain't got no beef with you. You got all the beef with me. Yeah, I might have interfered in y'all or whatever y'all got going on. I don't care, but I'm out of it now. Leave me alone. Please leave me out of the drama. You're not going to fight me because we're not going to fight. And that whole situation was a mess. Like, Ogbar, Ogbar, you was kind of uh, feisty too. Even though you was one of my favorites this season too, as a newcomer, you was kind of feisty at that reunion too. To trying to fight, um, little, trying to fight Shakana, the trying to fight, um, who you were trying to fight? You were trying to fight Shakana because you told her to shut the hell up and all that. To you want to fight Shakana, the um, you and Spice. No, you and Spice didn't get into it. I forgot which you got into it with, though. But, yeah, that whole Shekana and uh, um, Ogbar situation, if it's that if, if it's that old, let it go. Like, at this point, y'all probably used each other as a conjoining um, storyline. So, why y'all bringing y'all old mess to this show, meaning y'all new to the show, and y'all introducing us to y'all antique trash? Why are y'all doing this, Ogbar and Shakana? Now, Shakana, I also like you too. Never was into you with the TI and the family hustling all that. But I'm into you now. I kind of like what you're doing. I like your style. I like you always trying to help when you can help if it's available for you to help. So I kind of like all that about you. I hope you get a second season too. Ogbar, I hope you get another win. Who? If all you got to talk about is uh, all you got to talk about is Carly and this threesome, you and her stay way over there, stay way over the hell, y'all. Let because I don't want to hear that next season about you and her and, and Carly Red and that threesome. Say that mess with somebody who cares because I don't really care about it. Um, Rashida and Kirk. The fake baby, the fake baby daddy, the fake child that Kurt pretended that he the father. Rashida finding out the number. Rashida was kind of calm and cool and collected this season. Rashida was kind of like the help this kind of season. Like she was like Dr. Jeff without the without the license and without the psychiatry. Well, without the psychiatry lit um um without the psychiatry um the credentials of a psychiatrist, I want to say that. But Rashida was kind of cool and relaxed this season. Like, she ain't really getting no drama. She was there to help when she could help, if she could help. She tried to do some um things that didn't fall, that didn't fall through correctly. It always ended with drama. But Rashida was kind of cool and calm, besides when Jasmine got Kirk number. Then she got a little rowdy, but not too rowdy. But she did shake a little trees. She 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 she, she shook a little trees or whatever. Though, but Rashida was kind of calm and relaxed. She wasn't stressed out like she was last season. Wanted to end her marriage. Wanted to file for divorce. So I give Rashida that. She was kind of cool and relaxed this season with a little bit of drama involving a fake baby that Kurt playing as is his child. And y'all need to be struck by lightning, pretending that that's y'all child. 
sitting up there with straight faces, pretending like that child really in y'all line. Y'all dealing with that child. Y'all dealing with Jasmine with all the tents in the colony, trying to get curved. She trying to go out to party. She can't find nobody else to watch the baby. So Kirk there watching the baby. Y'all need y'all behind whoops with that. Y'all really need to be exposed and be need to be hit with lightning for that mess. I don't know how far y'all gonna go with this scam, but I'm tired of it. Like Kirk and Rashida, I grown to like Kirk a little bit. Rashida, I never hated you. You cool in my book, minus your husband, when he cheating or whatever. But y'all got to cut it out with this child. Y'all know darn well that, that child is not Kirk. Y'all know darn well Kirk ain't dealing with Jasmine in or that child or the drama or the stress that real life people dealing with when it comes when it comes to your husband stepping out on you having a baby from another woman. Y'all need to cut that mess out. And I don't know how the hell y'all sit up there with a straight face collecting a check, lying in there exploiting somebody else's child, and Jasmine sitting up there letting y'all exploit her child. Y'all need y'all behind whoop for that, and Mona, you need to be kicked in the head for that too, for going along with that lot this all this time, knowing darn well that baby ain't nowhere near Kurt, and Kurt, and Kurt took a DNA test right now, he'll be not the father. Y'all need to cut it out with this fake um, fake baby daddy storyline. I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of hearing it. That's part of the reason why I'm glad this show ended and we going to Hollow well, born Hollywood. But, yeah, y'all need to cut it out with that whole fake baby daddy. Oh, Jasmine got my number. Oh, pretend like you texting me a book. We don't ever see the message. We ain't see none of the messages. But Jasmine saw how I texted Kurt a whole book. A whole four page, five page letter. If y'all don't get that, Kirk and Rashida and Mona Scott, cut the mess out when it comes to this baby and stop pretending. I know it's a nice check for Jasmine and her son, but y'all need to cut it the hell out. I'm tired of this fake storyline with this fake baby and Kirk pretending like he an actual dad to this child, sitting up there lying through his teeth trying to keep a straight face. And you can tell Rashida uncomfortable with the whole situation because her conscience probably getting the best of her. Because you notice when they talk about that child, uh, Rashida looked like she constipated in the face and looked like she can't smile, laugh, or none of that. Y'all need to cut it out with that fake storyline. I just can't. I just have to talk about it. Every time y'all bring it up, I'm going to talk about how much I dislike it because I don't like being played with. Um, moving along now. Um, Spice and her colorism thing she was aiming for. Um, it worked out for, she said she booked and, um, she booked and, um, she booked and busy and she good. She did that to make a point, which she made a point and we seen the point, but I just didn't get it. Why, why it was you that was trying to make this point and trying to prove this point? But okay, we get a spice. You want to prove a point. You proved your point. Congratulations. I hope your black hypocrisy. Black hypocrisy, I can't say it. Black hypocrisy song work out for you good, and I hope you get a whole lot of money for it. So good luck in that situation. Um, and Tokyo and her depression, she beat depression. She got a new man. She happy. She loving her new life. Um, Sierra said she didn't mean to snap at um. Tokyo the way she did when she when she dumped that woman food in the sink like she did. She said she wasn't trying to do that. She loved Tokyo and she was doing that out of love. She did well her delivery was wrong, but she was trying to prove a point though. So I'm glad they over that. I'm glad they moved on. That's about it, y'all. Anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. See y'all for loving hip hop Hollywood. Bye.